We want to be very careful to separate what we know about this next story at the moment and what we don't. What we do know is this, Grant Wall, a beloved and highly regarded American sports journalist, said to possess abundant kindness, generosity, humility, and Midwestern charm, tragically collapsed and died in a press box at the World Cup in Qatar on Friday. We know he had visited a local medical clinic recently there, that he was told he might have bronchitis and that his body arrived back here in the United States this morning. On Saturday, FIFA honored his death with white lilies at the workstation to which he was assigned and a tribute on the stadium's big screen. Here's where this tragic news of the loss of this brilliant young star reporter combines with questions about just what happened to him. Because some, including his brother, had raised questions about the circumstances of Grant's death. He was only 49. He was in great shape. In response to those questions, the State Department late today suggested that they've seen no indication of foul play or anything nefarious at this point. Those questions were grounded in two areas. First, Wall was admirably outspoken on human rights issues and was openly critical of FIFA and Qatar on the topic of migrant worker deaths. Plus, he was initially refused entry to the USA Wales match and subsequently detained for declining to remove a rainbow T-shirt he was wearing in support of LGBTQ rights. Whatever the medical examination and autopsy reveal, whatever the cause of death was, we will always remember that his loving family will be dealing with unimaginable loss this holiday season and well beyond. Our thoughts are with them, particularly with his wife, Celine Gounder, an infectious disease specialist who was part of President Joe Biden's transition team providing advice on the coronavirus pandemic, has also appeared on this show as an expert. Joining us now, Chris Whittingham, host of Football with Grant Wall podcast. I am so sorry for your loss. Thank you, Nicole. Tell me, tell me first, let's talk about Grant Wall first, and then we'll talk about what we know. I read every tribute I could find online. I thought this was the most sort of cruel and vicious kind of tragedy, someone at the height of um, their, their profession, of their expertise, and giving back to everybody coming up behind him. Just tell me what it was like to work with him. Yeah, I started working with him about two and a half years ago, and it was at a time where I had just recently been let go from a job. I had known Grant a little bit from having had him as a guest on a few podcasts that I work on, and he... I, I reached out to him saying, hey, if you ever need any production help, I'd be happy to help. And he took me up on that, despite the fact that he barely knew me at all. I guess he researched me somewhat. And uh, we forged a relationship uh, that initially started as host producer. But I think he eventually saw that my passion for the game could be used in an on-air capacity. And he allowed me, despite the fact that he is, for me, America's foremost soccer expert, journalist, personality uh, on his podcast, and he would treat me as an equal. And that is a story that is fairly common when, as you say, you read all his tributes. Um, there are so many people that say similar things, that he treated people as equals, despite the fact that he had enormous standing in our game and enormous standing in journalism. And so many other journalists have stories like yours. Um, um, others have write, written about him opening his Rolodex and giving generously and asking nothing in return, but seeming to want others to pay it forward. LeBron James paid tribute um, to him. But I, I, I've covered issues that he elevated just in his time there. Let, let me show you um, what he had to say on this network on November 22nd. I arrived at the stadium last night for the U.S. game uh, wearing the shirt that you just showed with a rainbow around a soccer ball supporting LGBTQ issues and immediately was not allowed in by security officials who told me it was because of my shirt. They demanded I take the shirt off. I refused. They then, right after I got a tweet off, uh, forcibly took my cell phone. I told them this was not good for them to be doing this. Uh, eventually, the security commander uh, came and allowed me to go in. And there's an extraordinary body of work to his name, but he was also having an extraordinary professional moment at the World Cup. No question. And th this didn't just begin at the tournament. This is something that uh, he was working on prior to the tournament beginning, he went to Qatar several months before the media descends and tried to get the stories of migrant workers there in Qatar and tried to learn more about the place, not with 
a, a view towards criticizing it intentionally, but a view towards let me learn about this place and what are actually the ills here, and are there actually any people that would say nice things? And he, he tried to fairly tell the story, but as you say, it was a professional moment. Really, from the beginning, he also, prior to the tournament beginning, took a picture of a sign in the media center and was told to delete the picture from his phone, uh, a story that has happened to other journalists while there, tried to tell the story, obviously, of the LG. BTQ rights uh, issues in the country and has been constantly talking about things that are not related to the soccer. Was incredible at covering the soccer, but also uh, was dedicated to telling the stories of the World Cup beyond that. Grant Wall's journalism um, will now live in the voices and the words and the stories that people Google and read from years on. What, what work, what body of work, I, I think I can already guess where you might go with this. What was he most proud of in terms of stories that he has covered or, or was covering at the time of his death? I think there were so many. Um, you go back to when he first started covering soccer. I think the story of the 1999 Women's World Cup team that won the World Cup here in the U.S. He was a huge proponent of the women's game and told so many stories along the way. Um, I actually think of someone fairly recent, uh, Giovanni Reina, who is actually in the middle of a controversy, an on-field controversy that sort of pales in comparison to what's happening here um, with the U.S. men's team. Uh, he was... Uh, he told the story of the fact that his younger brother had recently passed. And I hope that people consider that when they talk about Giovanni Reina, uh, a 20-year-old U.S. star player uh, who's going through it a bit at the moment. But um, his family was incredibly proud of the story that Grant wrote. And Graham was incredibly proud to tell their story. There are count. I mean, you know, he he told me stories of you know meeting the biggest stars in the globe and South Beach and and interviewing people and LeBron James in 2003. Uh, actually, earlier than that, he was drafted in 2003. It would have been 2001 or 2002, and nobody knew who LeBron James was. He was the first to put him on the cover. There are so many cover stories you can go back. The 2010 World Cup moment uh, for the U.S. when Landon Donovan scored that goal. Um, he had an incredible uh, relationship with Landon. But I mean. The, the SI vault is stacked uh, with stories that Grand Wall wrote, wrote, and I personally will be going back and reading some of them, and I hope that some of your viewers might as well. I did that. Um, I, this news is so um, shocking and so sad, and, and just to admire someone at the height of their professional um, glory and to think that there is something to remember them with. I, I, I didn't know him personally, but I did. I went back and I, I read a bunch of the, those stories. Of they, they just drip with his humanity and the human beings he saw behind the people and the stories he covered. Um, Chris, again, I'm so sorry for your loss. Thank you so much for spending some time with us to talk about Grant. Thank you, Nicole.